Microsoft and others orchestrate takedown of TrickBot botnet. Uh, FS, ISEC, ESET, Lumen's Black... <laughs> oh, jeez, I shouldn't have started reading that part. Uh, yeah, a, bunch of, a bunch of agencies <laughs> participated in the takedown. So um, my question w when reading this is, you know, if you... If you took down a botnet, that's all the, the devices that might have been compromised um, over the course of, of the years that this was built up, because I think this one was several years, it said, since 2016. What's to stop it from just starting up again and, and starting yeah. to infect new new machines? So what, what they did is the, uh, the TrickBot botnet uh, had infected tons, over a, I think it was over a million devices, if I recall correctly, uh, which were mostly IoT devices. So things like webcams and, and other devices where people might not even realize they're hacked. Like you, you'd notice if your laptop or your cell phone was hacked, but if your webcam is hacked, you might not know it, and it might be blasting off all sorts of stuff across the internet. So that's how TrickBot functioned. And basically, Microsoft and these other organizations, they, they recognize that you can't get all of these end users to go and update their devices. It's just not going to happen. Otherwise, it, if people were doing updates, this wouldn't happen in the first place, right? But people aren't. And so what they do is they target the command infrastructure behind the scenes. So when they take out the command and control or the 2C servers... What does that mean? Because like the, the botnet is controlled by one central... Yeah. You know, computer that's telling so them what to do. Usually it's every couple of seconds your webcam will reach out to a central server and say, hey, do you have any instructions for me? Okay. And most of the time it would be no. And then the, the people who run these networks, they go on the dark web and they sell access to it. Like you could rent the TrickBot network for... Ten thousand dollars for an hour. It's just like AWS. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> they call it's it malware as a service, actually, which is crazy. Yeah. Like you, yeah. we've reached a critical like use of that buzzword when it's now. <laughs> by, by the way, your FOSS cam's pinging right in right now. <laughs> oh, <good>. so. <laughs> is that great. why Netflix is always buffering, even though I'm on fiber at home? Oh yeah. well, you know <laughs> that happens. And uh, so in this case, you know, all those IoT devices are trying to reach back to servers that aren't there anymore. Okay. And so they've kind of taken that piece <clears throat> out. So basically, whoever ran the TrickBot network would have to put up new command and control servers, and then they would have to reinfect all of those devices. Well, hopefully by this point, networks are aware of the exploits that were used and you know endpoint protection and all that will be better at protecting it. So they'll have to come up with some kind of new method to be able to spread that around. Yeah, I think it was Trick Daddy that was running it. Now, the, <laughs> Trick Daddy. my question is, if they knew where that machine is and, and what the IP address is and what ISP it's on, can they not go after this this person or, or people that, that set this up? So the problem is they, they use fake email accounts okay. and they set up with like my student information from the University of Florida. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the FBI it. comes and knocks at Don's house like, no, I didn't do that. And D Daniel, you've, you've messed around with this a bit, right? Like it's not hard to set up a cloud hosting service under a fake identity, is it? No, no. It's uh, sock puppets are a real thing where you're just like using fake information they have uh, different email servers that allow you to uh, basically, you know how you have to do some verification if you okay. don't want it to link back to yourself. There's just open uh, mail uh, services that will allow you to do that kind of thing. I do it all the time for getting information. I don't want to get marketed to. You yeah, we learned about that on our webinar. Right, Daniel, exactly. Daniel right. taught us that <laughs> all those were fake email addresses. Thanks. Fake, fakey, fake, fake. Thanks, Daniel. It's fun. Uh, but yeah, then once, once you have that in place, uh, like Don said, if they took it down, you just have to rebuild all that, which would be time and effort. But ultimately, they're, they're probably going to see a resurgence of some change because when it comes to especially uh, like closed source exploits, yeah, we know that TrickBot does this, but are they sitting on TrickBot 2.0 that will evade all those malware signatures and, and the way that it works so they can get by it? I'll, I'll be interested in seeing to, uh, whether or not that happens and, and how effective that yeah. becomes and how they can stop uh, a resurgence of that same botnet. And I think they mentioned in the article that there were a couple of botnets that were shut down like this before, and they did they manage did survive, to come back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just new command and control servers, and then they start to spread all over again. Well, that's yeah. the key. I mean, w you know, I'm always looking for the the takeaway, the lesson learned here, and the lesson to me is the same as as a company needs to have backups. Just uh, you give know, up. Site. <laughs> <laughs> have your have your botnet, you know, backed up all the time. That's so. It. You, you know, if it gets taken down, you yeah. can you can turn around and you, fire it up again. You got to take your command and control servers and make them hybrid cloud. That's you know? right. You got to right. spread them across more than one right. provider. I don't want to be in an availability zone that goes down. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I'm still trying to get C2 traffic. Yeah. Do you go. think they're calling like <laughs> AWS when when they go down? Going, I, I'm my botnet cannot even call yeah. home right I now. I think what's important here is that my botnet's down. Yeah. <laughs> And Daniel, did I say it wrong? I said 2C. Is it C2? C2, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Noob. 
Yeah, or <laughs> CNC command and control. This is embarrassing. Cool. Command and conquer servers. Command and conquer servers. <laughs> yep. That's yeah. right. If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.